I have been associated with gender studies for some time and I can categorically state that gender studies or addressing gender and post-conflict situations is very important. And there are a few reasons why addressing gender in post-conflict reconstruction is very important. One, gender structures how people experience conflict. It structures how men and women are addressed in conflict situations. For example, the men are zoned out for war, men have certain kind of vulnerabilities, women are targeted for rape, children are bashed. All that is a gendered process. Gender also structures the resources that are available to people during war. And it also structures people's experience post-war. Because you may find if many males have died in the villages, the women have to take on new roles as household providers. But depending on what the gender terrain is like, they may, not, they may actually struggle because they will have to provide without necessarily having the resources with which to provide. Alternatively, they may have to provide by taking on what were typically associated as male roles and without the actual facilitation and payment for the kind of jobs they are doing. So gender is very key because it is a key stratifier of how people experience conflict and post-conflict reconstruction. From our work in Rebuild, which started way off back in 2012, it was very clear that although the post-conflict reconstruction meant well, gender had not been taken seriously. The biggest emphasis was on getting the hardware in place, rebuilding roads, rebuilding the infrastructure, because the 20 plus year war had caused a lot of destruction. But the challenge was that the software of the reconstruction was not paid attention to. So while that was going on, the gender relations remained not very fair to the most vulnerable categories of people. For example, while my health really emphasized it assumed everyone could equally access the healthcare services. The only attention they tried to be gendered with regard to healthcare was with maternal and child health. That tended to leave out women who were not of reproductive age. It tended to leave out men in their entirety, but also tended to leave out people who had illnesses which were not necessarily the kind that contributed to the biggest burden of disease. For example, mental health issues were not addressed. People who had suffered crimes of a gendered nature, such as who had experienced rape, men who had been sodomized, did not really receive much attention. So one of the things we really learned from the Rebuild Project was that uh, with regard to post-conflict reconstruction, it is just not enough to put in place the hardware. It's very important to consider gender as you, you refashion the software bits of the post-conflict reconstruction. Another um, I and my other college uh, have done a study on uh, career progression of uh, the health workforce in Cambodia toward their leadership. And Cambodia is quite similar to other different contexts that uh, in health workforce, women uh, cover the vast majority of the workforce However, when you look at um, the leadership position, you can see that uh, the leadership still uh, school toward male. So that's why Cambodian team uh, are keen to explore uh, to explore how the gender shape the career progression of health workforce uh, in Park conflict Cambodia through times. Uh, it's very interesting to, to see that uh, it really, uh, the findings show clearly is that um, the gender, the shape, the, care, uh, the journey or the career progression of uh, male-female health workers through times in post-conflict Cambodia. Uh, this could mean that uh, started from the entry point when they start the, the career, uh, also uh, the progression through the uh, professional career development and also the leadership position. Um, the study also acknowledged that there is a, a progression in uh, mainstreaming gender in the health sector in Cambodia. However, we found three major aspects that uh, we have to be cautious in terms of gender 
uh, empower or uh, having more equitable uh, health workforce in Cambodia health sector. First, uh, even Cambodian society is more open, accept more women to be in the workforce. Uh, we the findings still uh, point out that uh, the uh, leadership is still skewed toward men because in the uh, perception that women are not suitable for leadership position while men tend to be have more like strategic vision and more suitable than women in the same position. Uh, for the second point, women still uh, struggle with you know uh, the. Uh, work-life balance, uh, the balance between the uh, career, like management role, provider roles, and the uh, domestic role, such as like caretaking of children and elderly. And at the same time, in the, institution, uh, in the institutional level, women tend to uh, lack of male support in their leadership, which also discourage them in taking more leadership role. Uh, at the individual level, uh, the limit capacity of women, for example, uh, limit uh, skill in management, uh, also having lower skill in medical, for example, nurses or midwife compared to medical doctor, is also the discourage factor uh, for women to uh, take up leadership position in the sector. So our recommendation is to uh, continue providing capacity building and mentorship uh, for women, uh, especially the junior women, uh, to prepare them to enter the leadership level. At the same time, perhaps providing awareness raising and uh, behavior change uh, uh, for the management level, especially the male manager, uh, so that we could shape more you know, uh, equitable uh, leadership in the health sector in Cambodia.